welcome to Fun Animals. I'm Miss Megan, and this is Bluebird. Are you guys ready for some cool, fun animal facts and current events? Today, we're gonna be talking about the brown pelican. Here it goes. Animal facts, rapid fire. Did you know that there are eight species of pelican? And they can be found everywhere except Antarctica. Pelicans have webbed feet and they have a wingspan of up to 10 feet. Pelicans have the largest bill out of any bird. Brown pelicans are normally located in really warm regions by lakes, rivers, and estuaries. Can you guess why? Pelicans eat mainly fish, but they can also eat tadpoles, crustaceans, turtles, fish. Thank you for pooping. Poop. Seagulls. Pelicans will eat seagulls if they're really hungry. They'll hunt them down. Whoosh. Who likes seagulls? Not a lot of us do, but we gotta coexist somehow. The reason why we're talking about brown pelicans is because they are on the endangered species list. The threats that pelicans have to their existence, water pollution, chemical pollution, and oil spills. Bycatch is another reason why pelicans are endangered too because when pelicans are hunting and they're fishing, sometimes they can get tangled up in those nets. I know, we don't like that at all. Lou's not happy about that, huh? No. How many gallons of water do you guys think a pelican's pouch can hold? Is it one? What do you think, Blue? Is it one? Okay, she thinks one, you can go. Is it two? Is it two? Oh, she also thinks it's two. Okay, here you go. Or can pelicans hold up to three gallons of water? Oh, Blue thinks three again as well. What do you guys think? The answer is three. Pelicans can hold three gallons of water in their pouch. That's a lot of water. But when pelicans are fishing, they don't drink all the water. They will actually scoop a bunch of fish and then tilt their head forward just a little bit, kind of like a spout, so all the water can flow out of their bill before they swallow down the good stuff, the catch, the herring, the yummy fish. So we know that pelicans use their pouch to catch fish, but they also use their pouch to help cool themselves down on really hot days. They'll swing it in the wind catch a breeze, it helps cool down all the other blood vessels inside of their body when they're letting the heat escape through the capillaries inside their pouch. What I find really cool is that there are white pelicans, brown pelicans, and six other species of pelican, but the white pelican will be found more inland. They hunt cooperatively, they hunt together. The brown pelican is a little bit more independent and they're found mostly on the coast. Brown pelicans and white pelicans have different hunting strategies. White pelicans, they hunt together. They'll even fly in a U formation and flap their wings really hard against the surface of the water, driving all of the fish into a very shallow area and then whoosh, they scoop them all up with their big old bills. But brown pelicans, I like to think of brown pelicans as pirates because they use their beak to impale and stun fish. They'll be way high up in the sky, they'll see a fish way down in the water, and then stun the fish, scoop them up, drip some of the water out, swallow down the delicious meal that they just scored all for themselves. Pelican mommies and pelican daddies, they work together. They build their nest out of sticks, feathers, and leaves. They will also take turns guarding the nest. So a female pelican can lay a clutch of eggs of up to three eggs. It's about 28 days later that those babies will hatch out. But here's the cool thing. Baby birds are never the same age, even if they're in the same clutch. Mama bird lays the first egg, that is the firstborn. Then mama lays the second egg a couple days later, that's the middle child like me and then the third egg comes and that's the baby so the first egg obviously will hatch first because it came out first a couple days later the second one the middle child then the third one the baby of the group 26 to 38 days both mom and dad pelican are guarding that nest pelicans can survive 10 
to 30 years in the wild. That's only about half of Blue's life expectancy. Macaws can live up to 60 to 80 years. Is that right? No. How long are you gonna live? For a long time? All right, time for some wildlife updates. Let's do a recap of 2017. This information came from the Wildlife Conservation Network. In 2017, the launch of the Lion Recovery Fund went phenomenally. Lion populations have dropped from 200,000 about a century ago to only 20,000 today. Take an entire zero off. That's crazy. Believe it or not, lions need our help and their populations have been declining, which is the sad part, but this is the good part. The Lion Recovery Fund committed $1 million back in August to help bring lions back from the brink. Not only are they investing in the world's best conservationists to come up with ways to help protect African lions, but also African wildlands as well. So they're helping not just the animal, they're helping where they live, their neighborhood, their environment, their habitat, so that they can live peacefully. Because we can save an animal, but if there's nowhere for them to live in the wild. Another good thing that 2017 brought was snow leopard conservation and awareness. We found out that there's not just one species of snow leopard, there are three species of snow leopard. All thanks to the Snow Leopard Conservancy. Their information and their research has really contributed to figuring out not only different species, population numbers, and their behavior out in the wild. With this information, it will help scientists to devise tactics so that they can help save the species. The more we know, the more we can help. Usually being downgraded is a bad thing, but when you're downgraded from endangered to vulnerable, that is huge. We are so happy that the snow leopard was downgraded from endangered to vulnerable because that's only better news for the snow leopard. It means they're starting to recover, but we can't give up our efforts. We have to keep pushing through. Little tiny victories will make for a big payoff in the end. Did you guys know that Tiffany and Company helps save elephants? It's true. They partnered with a superstar model who started a crazy campaign, hashtag not my planet. They launched this campaign during New York's Fashion Week, which is genius. Way to use a platform that gets plenty of eyeballs for something that can really help save a species. They were able to donate $1 million in December to the Elephant Crisis Fund. And last but not least, good old cheetahs. National Geographic Society's Big Cat Initiative was a big supporter of helping to save cheetahs. They were able to partner up and join forces so that the cheetah has a conservation status that is no longer just vulnerable, it has now been upgraded to endangered. But that will help bring more awareness and attention to the crisis that cheetahs are going through today. Their numbers have decreased tremendously, so it's only up to us to bring awareness and let you guys know cheetahs need our help. Snow leopards got some of our help, now it's time to help out a little bit of a bigger cat, the cheetah. Okay friends, so this is the part of the show where I just tell you about fun stuff about Blue and I. So Blue's birthday is next month and I'm trying to plan out some fun things. Last year we had a party in the living room and she got a whole big platter of food. She opened up some presents, she got a bunch of toys. But what should I do for her birthday this year? It's in February and she's gonna be a whopping 33 years old. And bird years are the same as human years. She's 33, midlife, but no crisis. Blue brought me a present this morning. Would you guys like to see? Okay, I'll show you. All right, this is a surprise. Can you turn around? Turn around. Turn around. Show us your beautiful face. Okay. She made an egg. Look at this little tiny egg. Is that your egg? There's no baby inside of here. It was never fertilized. She's not the Virgin Mary. She cannot have babies without another mate. Takes two to tango. Kind of like a chicken, she laid an egg and instead of throwing it away, I decided to keep it. 
and I actually hollowed it out. So there's nothing inside of here. Blue's been nesting for quite some time and it's mostly because we've really upped our relationship. It's kind of odd because I'm also mom, but I'm also her mate. We're pair bonded, so she lays me eggs. Lucky me. Do I eat them? No. It's kind of gross. They're so tiny. If you want to try an exotic animal egg, I would recommend a peacock egg. Unfertilized, obviously, but try peacock eggs. They're really delicious. Thank you all for tuning in. Just remember, it's the efforts that you guys put forth that help bring awareness to the plights of animals, and knowledge is power. The more that we know, the more we can do, and the more we can save. So, with that being said, Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope to see you next week. Don't forget, subscribe below and check us out on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, all those fun things. If you'd like Blue and I to come to your school, your classroom, your birthday party, let us know. Go to funanimals.com so you can find more information on how to book. Bye. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> what are you doing? I don't even know how to say this. Bowler pouch in their sack.